think I've done it guys. I think I have designed the ultimate trailer boat package. We've got a brand new Surtees 800 Game Fisher inboard diesel back there, but everybody knows if you're gonna have the ultimate trailer boat, you need the ultimate tow vehicle, and this year we're super excited to have teamed up with Ram Trucks New Zealand and Winger Hamilton to be towing my dream boat with my dream vehicle, the Ram Warlock 1500, four and a half ton tow capacity, a 5.7 litre V8 Hemi engine. It tows like an absolute dream. Once again, we've equipped our dream vehicle with our dream ute lid. The team at Mac Utes have put this stunning alloy ute lid on the truck and it makes it so much more versatile. But the important thing is the boat. We have designed this thing from the ground up, starting with this Balex aluminium trailer. Of course, it's equipped with the automatic boat loading system that Balex is so famous for, but there's a few other pretty exciting features, namely 20 litres of fresh water, little button here that I can press after we've launched the boat, and as the boat sits there in the car park and we're heading out, the wheels, the brakes, the axles, the springs are all getting a nice spray with fresh water. We've added a little bit of Dirty Steve Salt Eliminator in there as well, so the trailer's already clean when we get back to the boat ramp. Triple axle trailer, toes like a dream. Two of the axles, four of the wheels are braked, so obviously it stops really well, which is of course important. And before we put the boat on the water to check out all the awesome features on board, a couple of the things to look at in the transom here, we've got these amazing Surtees transom cage ladders. Both sides make getting in and out of the boat a total breeze. Again, we've gone with the zip weight, automatic trim control, the 300S system. Automatic trim, pitch and roll. It's a total game changer. We've had it on two of our boats now. We'll never be without it. In terms of sonar capabilities, we've got a Garmin GT51 clear view and side scanning sonar. And up underneath there is the MR R109 two kilowatt through hole transducer, whose performance is absolutely stunning. You'll get to check that out soon. And the star of the show, the Mercury TDI 270 diesel and the Mercury Bravo 3 Seacore stern leg. We're gonna be rumbling those marlin up. We're gonna have better fuel economy, bigger range, and just an all round better ride for a boat of this size. But anyway, without any further ado, let's get this boat in the water. We'll jump on board and we'll give you the full walkthrough of all the features we've packed into my ultimate trailer boat. One of the big concerns when moving to a bigger boat is how easy it is to launch and retrieve it. And if you've been watching the channel before, you'll know how much of a fan I am of the Balex automatic boat loading system. And now that they've combined their roller system with their own custom made trailers, it is literally the ultimate way to launch and retrieve your trailer boat. It makes it so easy. It's almost like tuning. What a time to be alive. It's as easy as that. One launched, eight meter boat. Before we jump on the water, as you can see, we've got a lot going on on the roof. We've got the Garmin Phantom Open Array Radar. That gives us magnificent target detection at night, picking up other boats and the land. But most importantly for us, it is an absolute industry leader in picking up birds. And as any of you fishermen know, find the birds, find the bait, find the fish. In front of that, we've got a Fleur night vision camera, which adds to our night traveling capabilities. That gives us an amazing image on our Garmin head unit and also combines nicely with the open array radar. And then just to add to the third part of our night traveling capabilities, we've got this Nava light bar package across the front of the boat, which is bloody fantastic. Obviously today we've launched at a beautiful boat ramp, but for those times when, you, when you're at a less than ideal ramp where you want to launch yourself off the bow onto the beach, we've got this game-changing bow-mounted loading ladder, which is a two-piece system, folds down like that, and makes getting on and off the bow an absolute breeze. Whereas in times gone by, you've got to get yourself very wet. So that's another 
innovative feature that CRTs is so renowned for. Another one of the features I wanted to include in this boat was the ability to contact the Coast Guard but also use the boat to boat channel when we're far, far offshore. So we've included 10 foot aerials that have increased our boat to boat range significantly and we're also combining that with an onboard Garmin inReach satellite communication system so we've got two VHF head units there we can monitor channel 16 the Coast Guard channel on one of the head units and on the other one we can be monitoring the boat to boat channels so we've maximised our connectivity on the boat but enough chatting at the wharf I think it's time we kick the Mercury diesel into gear and went out and looked at some other of the on-water features of the stunning heavy metal. Let's go team. Let's go. As you can see our helm station is an absolute work of art. We've got the Garmin 8422 22 inch multifunction display. That's displaying obviously at the moment our traditional sonar image our chart as we exit the harbour here but we can control everything from our fusion marine entertainment system through our digital switching you can see here we can control our nava lights our uh, live bait tanks our bilge pumps all from that digital switching and we can go right through into our radar night mode game fishing mode all at the touch of a button and as a backup to our switches, we've got all the switches on a full rocker switch panel as well. So it gives us maximum functionality. We can control everything we need to, all at our fingertips right here. And we've got our two VHF head units ready to go. That gives me the ability to monitor channel 16, as well as the local Coast Guard channel on one head unit. And on the other, I can monitor all the boat to boat channels. So I never miss out any information and I can always find out where the hot bite is. I've also added a Garmin inReach satellite communication device which with my latest Garmin software update gives me the ability of controlling my inReach messages through my head unit like that which means all my communications are at my fingertips. Everything from texting anyone in the world, talking to anyone on the water next to me and monitoring the Coast Guard channel. We've got it all right here and having such a big multi-function display means that I can stack a lot more information on my screen without it becoming too cluttered. So the sweet spot for our steaming is about 32.50 RPM which we're going about now. We're using 34 and a half litres an hour. We're doing 23 knots, 1.48 litres of nautical mile. And if I bring it back down to trolling speed. So our sweet spot for trolling seems to be about 1650 RPM, which I'm at now. As you can see from your bird's eye view, we've got a nice speed going. We're going about 7.6 to eight knots. I found the diesels really consistent it doesn't get affected by the sea conditions as much as the outboard used to but at that speed we're doing about a litre per nautical mile which equates to just under eight litres per hour doesn't even feel real to say that those are mind-blowing fuel economy statistics you're going to get sick of me saying that but i'm still getting used to the fact that we control at those sorts of speeds with that little fuel burn, it really is amazing. And as you can hear, nice rumble, but not so loud that we can't have a nice, pleasant conversation. And that motor noise is gonna get well and truly drowned out by my screaming when a fish comes up behind this boat for the first time. Our top speed is about 34 knots, but top speed is of not a huge amount of interest to me. I like economical trolling and cruising speed and what this TDI engine has when it's combined with that Bravo 3 leg is an epic hole shot. The torque where it jumps out of the hole onto the plane is incredible, blows anything I've had in the past out of the water. And for things like bar crossings, that's an absolute must for me. I want to be able to get up and boogie really fast. One of the big considerations we made 
when designing the inboard system was how we could fit the motor into the boat and still maintain as much cockpit space as possible. And as you can see, the team at CRTs have done an amazing job with fitting the engine itself into the transom of the boat. That's made the boat nicely balanced fore and aft, and it also has meant that we're only taking up this tiny little piece of the cockpit with the engine bay. This innovative two-stage system, fully waterproof. You can see our engine battery, one of our house batteries is on a removable platform on top of the engine itself. And then with an internal latching system, we can get into the actual motor itself. The heart of the boat, the Mercury TDI 270 engine. Wonderful motor, it's a very enjoyable experience steaming in this boat, whereas traditionally diesel motors can be quite loud and the Mercury is industry leading in its sound and of course the important thing, it's fuel economy. So we'll close that up and there's some other pretty awesome stuff to check out on the cockpit of this boat. So this duckboard area is a super functional space on our boat. Obviously with an outboard style of boat you're going to have at least one giant outboard here, here with the way that CRTs has designed the engine box for our inboard. It's given us maximum space on the swim platform at the back. We've gone for the cage option, added a couple of rod holders for those stray line missions. And the best part about this swim platform is the fact that it's 150 mils higher than my last boat, the 750 Game Fisher. And it means, as you can see, you can fish here with dry feet, which for those cold winter days where you're wearing your deck boots with socks, it's an absolute game, game changer. We've also got a removable bait board here. So for the winter missions, we've got some extra rod storage, a place to cut up our bait. And then when it comes time to go game fishing, we can remove that and give ourselves maximum room across the transom. As we sort of move into the transom space, we've got twin tuna tubes, one on each side of the boat. And at the moment, because we're not using tuna tubes, we're using little drop-in rubbish bins, which is very handy for those bits of rubbish, easy to pull out and empty into the bin when you get home. And on the other side, we've got a giant floor to the top of the transom, live bait tank. That's got a big glass window on the front, obviously, and it's also got Narva underwater lights in there, so it looks cool, which is the most important thing. So it's a very functional part of the boat, awesome for fishing in, and the best part is, the underside of this platform is closed in, it's got added buoyancy in it, so this boat goes like an absolute demon in reverse, which is great when it comes time to start backing down on the marlin. We've optioned this boat with clip-on rod holders, and I worked with Pezel at Surtees to design these bent butt specific rod holders, which mean our game gear or our electrics with bent butts, rather than traditionally sitting in these rod holders and taking up a lot of cockpit space, we can chuck them into those bent butt rod holders. They sit vertically and make it a lot more of a pleasant space while we're traveling. And of course, we've optioned this boat with eight Exploding Fish 360 Evolution rotating rod holders, which make setting your boat up for game fishing, electric reel fishing, an absolute dream. At the moment, that's set up so we can do some deep dropping with our electrics. But if we were game fishing, we wanted to point our rod tips towards the stern of the boat, push the button, and those rod holders rotate like so. Wonderful product, beautifully made. We've had them on our last boat as well, and I would not be without them. We've equipped this boat with a full Narva lighting package. We've got cockpit lights, red and white, under the gunnels. We've got spotlights, red and white, under the Roof here, we've got white scene lamps on the side of the hard top, which are great for bait fishing or sword fishing, or even loading the boat up in the dark. And we've also got red and white lights in the cabin, and then under shelf strip lights up in the v berth, as well as a red and white scene lamp up there as well. So wonderful set of lighting from Narva Lights. We've got rod holders throughout this boat. We've got 12 rod holders on the roof as well as a shotgun rod or a shotgun pole holder that we can also use for a rod holder when we're not game fishing. We've got the optional 
Certes clip-on rod holders as we've already mentioned. We've got five rod holders in the top of the bait board. So I don't think there's ever going to be a day when we have every rod holder full. Another feature I really like is obviously the under seat storage for our Yeti chili bin. Great place to keep food, drinks, bait, whatever. And then on top of that, we've got this very handy tackle drawer, which is an awesome place to keep game gloves, filleting knives, crimpers, all that stuff that you need at hand when you're out having a busy day's fishing. One of the standout features of this boat are these bifolding doors from C-Mac. It gives us the ability to have the whole cabin open like this, giving you the be most beautiful fishing platform, but it also means we can entirely shut in the cabin for those cold nights or those long steams or where you're wanting to keep those summer bugs away. And the team at C-Mac designed us these absolutely beautiful bifolding doors that I'm very, very proud of. The workmanship from the team at C-Mac is second to none and the finished product is absolutely epic. Look at that. Beautiful. It's a work of art. I'd be stoked to have those in my house and my favourite bit is that baked in built to fish Martin logo. How good. So when I designed this boat with the team at Surtees, the focus was on fishing. So I've opted out of fresh water, out of a cooker, out of a gas caliphant to heat the water. But what I have done is kept the places where they traditionally would have a caliphant or a fresh water tank, and I've optioned the boat up with extra dry storage. So at the moment I've got some ropes in there, I've got that on both sides, and that gives us great places to just store those things you don't need all the time, but you can cleanly and tidily store them away. We were bluefin fishing last week, and that was a great place to put our flying gaff heads, for example. And instead of having a freshwater tank, I find that personally, fresh water, it gets a bit manky when it sits on the boat for an extended period of time. So instead, we just bring out four of these Yeti jugs. The water's fresh, icy cold, and it lasts us for days and days. And they sit nicely in the beautiful sea deck gunnels. Goes without saying, the entire boat is decked out with sea deck, our mocker, over black, we've got it up on the casting platform on the bow, on the dash inside the cabin, all over the cockpit, the swim platform, and we've also got it on the roof to store dive gear, to stand up and look for workups, that sort of thing. A lot of thought went into the seating on this boat. Traditionally, the Surtees 800 Game Fisher has had a front and back facing twin seat on the port side, and on the starboard side, it's had a uh, cooker, a sink, a uh, diesel heater, and that sort of thing. What I wanted to do was have places for my entire crew to sit comfortably during a full day's game fishing. So we slightly reduced the size of this two-seater and made it a single-seater, which is the premium spot on the boat to sit and watch the lures with our Yeti chili bin there as a foot rest I guess. Um, obviously you can reach your drinks by lifting that up or we've also got easy access to our isotherm fridge as well. On the starboard side behind the helm we've got another rear facing seat which is a nice height to sit, relax, again watch the lures. The most important thing is it doesn't impede my view when I'm sitting at the helm. This beautiful seat from High Tech Plastics can rotate, we'll show that once we get into the cabin, but I want to be able to sit be able to see my electronics, reach my teaser reels, and see clearly over the head of whoever's sitting in this seat watching the lures. This seat can go front and back as well, and as can the passenger seat in the front of the cabin, which is also a great place for someone to sit and watch the lures as well. So everyone's got a nice spot where they can sit either on these two seats facing forward or back, and everyone gets a good view of the lures and there's oodles of space up here in this cabin. I love it in here. I put a lot of thought into this helm area. We've talked about the seating, but most important to me, obviously, from a selfish perspective, was me being able to sit on this beautiful high-tech plastic seat, sitting on top of this Shockwave Sentinel Shockwave system. I can, with these 
adjustable armrests sit. Obviously, on a bolster or stand with my bolster up, can steam standing, drive the boat standing, have tons of space to get in and out, or I can pull my bolster down, sit up here, folding down footrest, beautiful comfy spot to drive the boat. I can also, when we're out game fishing, rotate my seat to the full 90 degree position where I can now sit comfortably here. I've got access to my chart, my sounder, my VHF radios and my teaser reels. So everything is within arm's reach and even at a stretch I can reach down into this stunning isotherm fridge and fetch out a delicious beer. And seeing as we're rested up for the day, I might even drink one of those now as we take you through the rest of the tour. I guess it's a good time now to point out that inside the cabin next to me and next to both my passengers we've included oversized cup holders which comfortably fit the Yeti can coasters but also fit perfectly Yeti drink bottles and Yeti coffee cups. That's a neat feature as well. We've got the full Fusion Marine audio package with a under seat sub, an amplifier, eight speakers and the RA770 head unit. It absolutely blasts. We also optioned the cabin out with these cool marine ventilation hatches I guess and that's great for those hot summer days when we're trolling to just have air through, airflow through the cabin and I'm a really big fan of this leather look that Certes has finish this cabin with. It's comfortable to lean against, it's easy to keep clean and it looks absolutely plush. In terms of storage in here we have three soft closed drawers underneath the helm seat which are great for keeping things like remote controls, tag cards, any of the sort of day-to-day -day stuff you need to reach quickly and efficiently. Then under the table here we have a big slide out carpet drawer which at the moment has got some gas for the cooker, uh, fire extinguisher, vacuum cleaner, that sort of stuff under there. So we're lucky to have tons of storage. I also went for the option of under seat storage here which is a great place for pillows, sleeping bags, clothing, reduces the clutter inside the cabin. So having a ton of storage on a boat is something that's really important to us. We obviously travel with a lot of fishing gear and on top of that we have a lot of camera gear as well. I guess while I've got that seat off I can show you the sleeping arrangements for up high here. So this front and back facing seat and table actually transforms into a, I'm told, very comfortable single bed. So that sits there, the seat goes back on, make sure I line up my plug holes, there we go, and with a quick turn of the pedestal from high tech plastics, you can put the seat down there, I mean the table down there, tighten that up, there we go that's clamped down, and we have a little piece of pad in here that completes the bed. So this is a great place to sleep. Like I saw, very comfortable and the other bonus is if we leave that backrest up it gives someone the option of having an actual seated day bed for the day while you're watching the lures as well. Very very luxurious. It's a pretty cool setup actually. Well thought out by Surtees. One of the big considerations we had when laying out this boat was making it as fit for purpose as possible for overnighting. We do a lot of overnighting out off the west coast during marlin season. So as you can see in this V-berth area, there's a massive amount of space for three people to sleep. We've got lights underneath the gunnels. We've got lights up in the cabin area. And I mean, even at a stretch, you can access your cool, cool marine hatch here as well if you want a little bit of extra airflow. Then of course, for during the day we can store stuff under the seat here so we've got some of our camera gear under there but we also for 
the ladies in particular have optioned the boat with a full macerating flush toilet here which is only for Mel to use really but it's a nice option to have she's earned that one over the years and it's an electronic macerating toilet flushes out into the ocean and of course we're using specific biodegradable blue tissue toilet tissue so there's tons of space up here I mean being able to sit and talk to you guys up in the v-birth area of the boat is actually amazing we've got um, more storage underneath all the seats here so at the moment I've just got cleaning gear some safety equipment but that's on all sides so we really have thought about maximizing our storage we've also got nice big shelves for storing stuff as well privacy curtain for when the head is in use and that just sits up nicely in the shelf there so as you can see a ton of space up here and the beauty is when it comes time to sleep all this stuff that is sitting on the bed right now can just be stored under the seats and it leaves the cockpit nice and clear and clutter free which is something that is very important to me because I don't like clutter on the boat particularly when we're overnighting a lot of space I really really like it so the helm's been carefully thought out we've obviously got this beautiful big Garmin 8422 screen fully customizable I've got the option digital switch in here so I can control my internal and exterior lighting as well as bilges live bait tanks um, I can control my fusion stereo system I can access all my sonar chart radar information I can also look at um, all my battery information uh, I can access my inReach digital communication device and if you want to get really really technical you can even at a stretch we can access our Chromecast which has Netflix, YouTube, Apple TV, Spotify, Prime Video all that stuff you really don't need on a fishing boat but it sure is cool to have it alright you've seen the inside of the cabin Let's kick the Mercury diesel into gear, take her for a run, and we'll look at the fishing area up the front. And then we'll answer a few of the questions I'm sure you have around fuel usage. So right now we're heading out to a nearby reef just to utilize the casting platform on the front. And to give you a little bit of an indication of our fuel burn, we're currently doing 20 knots using 29.7 litres an hour at 1.44 litres per nautical mile so absolutely spectacular fuel economy from the Mercury diesel engine and the noise isn't bad the zip weight dynamic trim system is amazing you've got the option of a full auto mode which I find myself using the majority of the time but you can also switch to manual mode if you want to control it a little differently but it is a wonderful feature and I would highly recommend the Zipwake dynamic trim control system. Also got scan strut, wireless charging ports for skipper and passenger, one on the shelf, one on the dash. Great place to store your phones and also means they're always charged and it's right next to my inReach GPS map 86i which is an all-in-one marine communication and GPS device can take it off take it on adventures or leave it in that charging cradle so it'll sink in with my multifunction display this is one of my favorite areas in the new boat having a casting platform on the bow complete with the giant 90 inch Mincota means that we can use this zone for everything from soft baiting, stick baiting, fly fishing. I've got the Mincota control the tip of my fingers and coming out here and then out of cast see where you're going with the Mincota and fish just opens up a whole new area. Certes has done an amazing job by 
covering in our Lone Star GX3 anchor winch, the finest anchor winches in the game, no questions asked. That's all contained under the floor there with that beautiful sea deck covered lid. This casting platform has opened up so much extra fishing room on this boat. We optioned it with a couple of rod holders so you can quickly put your rod in a rod holder. Gives you your, obviously both your hands to retrieve them in coda, deal with your anchor, any other number of things. But having a space like this where a couple of you can easily stick bait, soft bait, fly fish, or if we're really lucky, fight a marlin, it's really, I guess, made the entire length of the boat the ultimate fishing platform. In terms of our outrigger setup, we're running the Bonds Kraken outrigger bases and a pull through cleat system for our halyard tensioning. I'll put a link in the comments below to a full video on how we set up our outriggers. We've also got fast charging USB A and USB C ports all through the boat, but we've got one on each side of the hard top on the exterior of the boat so that we can run our external GoPros to capture all the action as it happens. It's a very well thought out cockpit and in our limited experience on the boat so far it's all working absolutely perfectly and I couldn't be happier with it. Really stoked. We're running our shotgun rod here on the starboard side, long rigger, long corner, short rigger, short corner and our dredge powered by our Marinko two pin plugs which we have on each side under the gunnels which is also a perfect place for our electric reels to run as well. So you guys are going to have some questions I'm sure around our sonar performance. We've zipped out to some pins we've identified on our Garmin relief shading which is a fantastic feature. It's very data heavy but as you can see from these images you get high relief shading of all these unmarked rocks and pins. It's almost like cheating. However when we switch across to our sonar page that is our low chirp image through our R109 and despite the fact there's no fish there you can see that our bottom performance is amazing. We're in 258 meters we've had this trolling out to 1800 meters we're still picking up the bottom absolutely fine and in terms of being able to identify fish if there was fish there we'd be picking them up back here you can see we actually went over what I would imagine is either gem fish or potentially some bait fish sitting down at about 240 meters but we're easily going to be picking up thermoclines right out to 2000 meters not that I'm ever going to have any need to fish in the bottom in 2000 meters but for sword fishing and that sort of thing this is going to be spectacular I'm running a split frequency here so I'm running my high chirp and my low chirp my high chirp is a high wide frequency so it's got a wide beam width and whilst that's generally used in shallow water you can see that in 305 meeting, meters we're getting a very clear image on the right side of my screen I've zoomed in on my low frequency unfortunately there's no fish there for us to look at but you can see that it's easily picking up the bottom what's great from a game fishing perspective as you can see from this footage is when I'm out trolling I can have my low chirp picking up the entire water column, picking up the bottom, that's identifying bait balls, that sort of thing. I switch across to my high chirp side which is focused only on the top 100 metres of the water column and it's great for target identification. In this image here you can see beautiful images of bluefin tuna shortly before piling onto our lures. So the Garmin sonar system is working absolutely flawlessly. I was fairly nervous going to a new system. I didn't know how it was going to work and it's fair to say that I've been absolutely blown away by the performance. And the best thing is with that through hole transducer, it doesn't matter if we're stationary, trolling speed or flat out steaming, I'm getting exactly the same performance, especially picking up the bottom in very, very deep water, which is exactly what I was going for. So there we have it team, it's been a labour of love putting this boat on the water but it's fair to say that we're extremely stoked how it's turned out 
and the exciting thing for you guys is you're about to see many, many adventures on the latest reincarnation of Heavy Metal 4. So there we go. That's our walkthrough of our ultimate trailer boat package.